What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about setting up our own at home self hosted game server. So the idea is that we're going to take a Proxmox server, we're going to go over there and from there we're going to build out VMs to be able to host different games. So if you watched last week's video you probably saw me mention that I'm repurposing my old tower server and that's because I want to start self hosting some game servers off of it. So I've had some friends asking, hey can we set up a 5M server? We always want to set up a Minecraft server and some of the other stuff that comes up. So I figured if I have the old hardware laying around, I might as well let it use something while we need it. So we're going to go over and do a little mini series of doing a fresh install of Proxmox and then how to build it out to self host some game servers. I'm going to focus on doing like 5M, Minecraft, and then if you guys have any other suggestions, comment them below and I'll look into how to figure it out, how to do it, and we'll do a video on it. But that's enough of that. Let's get right into the setup. The first thing we're going to want to do is go over to Proxmox's website. So it's just proxmox.com. If you just want to Google it, it should be the first hit. We're going to go over to downloads. So you can just filter it out by virtual environment. And then you can grab the latest download ISO. The next thing we're going to want to do is use Bolina Etcher, Rufus, whatever uh, ISO burn tool you're going to use. And you're just going to grab that ISO. You're going to put it into the Bolina Etcher or whatever you're using. So we'll just grab 8.2.1. If you could just put one of your USB drives in there. And then you're going to flash it over. And when that's all done, you're all set to move on to the next step. So after you have your ISO burned over to your USB, all we have left to do is install it into the computer. So to do that, just put it in one of the USB drives. You're probably going to put a keyboard and mouse on there. Okay, so now that you have your USB drive in and your optical devices, your keyboard and mouse, you should be all good to power on your computer. So I'm just going to turn that on. And you're going to want to boot into your BIOS. So it's either going to be Delete or F12. So you're just going to want to tap back and forth until you see the splash screen for your BIOS come up. All right, now you can see mine is a little messed up because the resolution because this computer is really old, but we're going to make it work. I'm just going to come over to boot and we're going to select our boot option. And it's a little funny because of how it's formatted right now, but it's going to be UEFI USB disk or USB disk, whichever one. So I am using my Ventoy drive. So I'm going to use the UEFI. The UEFI. I'm just going to hit enter. And um, we're just going to go over here now. We're going to move over. I know you can't see, but we're going to go over. It should be like a apply settings or a save and exit kind of option. And we're just going to hit save changes and exit. So you're going to want to make sure you actually save your changes. You don't want to discard them. The computer will reboot now. And now we should be all good. And it should boot into your USB drive. You can see the BIOS flash screen. And here we are at Ventoy. So Ventoy is a really cool tool. We talked about it on the channel and I'll, I'll put a link below. But pretty much you can make a USB disk that hold multiple multiple isos and make it way easier when it comes to burning out machines i'm just going to come over here to the proxmox ve i'm going to boot it in normal mode and now this is going to boot into our proxmox installer so you can see it is right here i'm going to do the graphical install it's going to start loading up the installer and then in a minute or so it should give us our next set of menus so we'll be right back when we have those menus all right so this is going to be the next set of the installer menus so this is just going to start going through the proxmox wizard so I don't have a mouse in, so I'm just going to use the tab key and hope for the best. Uh, but we're going to pretty much want to get over to I agree in the bottom right corner. Now we're going to be selecting the drive that we actually want to install Proxmox onto. So I'm going to come over here and you can open it up. And you can see I have two drives in here. I have my SATA drive and I also have an 8 terabyte drive. So I'm just going to select my SATA drive. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you can come over to options if you want, and if you want to mess with like partitioning it or anything, you could do that. I don't really recommend doing that. I ended up doing that on my first Proxmox install, and I thought, hey, I'll just partition this uh, 120 gig drive. I'll give myself like 30 for the OS and you know whatever for another LVM group. Not a good idea unless you have a larger drive. Your boot drive, you probably want like minimum 75 gigs because I have 30 on one machine, or I had 30 on one machine. And it was a constant fear of uh, crashing the system because it would run out of storage. So just make sure you have a good amount of storage for your OS to run on. Um, now we're going to come over to next. Over here we're just going to be setting our time zone. So I'm pretty good with this. So I'm just going to come over here and we'll do my where I am. Go. I'm going to use English. And then we'll hit next. So now you're going to be setting your password. So this is going to be your password to access your root account. So make sure whatever you set this, you do remember. And then you're going to set an email address. So it's just to make an account. It doesn't really get used for anything, so you don't need to worry. 
We're just gonna hit next. Over here, we're just gonna be setting some network options. So the first thing it's gonna be saying is a host name or a FQDN. So really the only thing to do here is make sure you put in something that's not gonna resolve to really anything. So I'm gonna do barmine.home. And ho dot home, I believe, is an FQDN that is like now declared for internal use only. So we should be fine. Other than that, we're gonna set our network info. So if you wanna set a static IP here, you can. And then you can just set your gateway and then the DNS server. So I'm just going to adjust this to use my gateway because that is my main DNS server. I'm going to click next again. I was going to double check that everything looks right. And it does. So I'm going to come over to install. And now we're going to start the install process. So this might take anywhere from like 5 to 10 minutes depending on your hardware. But when this is all done, we'll be right back. One side note that if you are using Vento USB to deploy the ISO, you might want to select Grub2. I did run into an issue where when I did normal, it seemed to cause an error. I don't know if it was from when I was messing with the partition size or when I booted in. I do know that it is Debian based and it does prefer to use Grub for the booting and everything else. So you might want to just use Grub too because it seems to be more successful, but it could be a you know user thing for me, not you. So if you do run into the issue that says like it can't make the partition or errors out to the install and you are using Ventoid, just circle back and try using Grub too instead of normal mode. But just another minute and we should be back and setting up Proxmox. So the install finished and you can see over here it rebooted and it came over here with saying to boot into Proxmox. So right over here we're just going to be booting into Proxmox. And in about a minute or so it's going to have all bunch of text across the, the uh, screen. It's going to be giving all the information like the IP info and whatever else. And then it's going to tell us the login page for our Proxmox server. So I'm just going to give this a minute and then we're going to log in. Okay, and then after a couple minutes or however long it takes, you should get a screen that looks like this. Over here it's going to have a link, it's going to be HTTPS, colon slash slash your IP slash 8006, a colon slash 8006. So that's going to be the web portal to access Proxmox. So we're going to cut over there and we're going to finish up with the install and setup. So I just moved over to Firefox. I put in that URL, so just the IP, colon 8006, that's the port for Proxmox. You're going to get a warning like this, it's okay because there's no cert assigned to the page. So your first login, and all your logins is gonna be root and whatever that password was that you set up, you are always gonna be using the root account. It doesn't really change. And then other than that, you're just gonna have whatever you made it. So like I made mine barmine.home, it named my server barmine. Uh, but other than that, this is the first steps in setting up your Proxmox server. And now you have an actual host running. So now we just need to do some configuration and for that, we're going to come over to the Proxmox helper scripts. If you're a returning viewer, you probably see me talk about these a few times, but these are super helpful, especially when it comes to getting the stuff configured and making it really simple to go. So the first one we're going to want to do is the post install script. So what this is going to do is disable like the enterprise repo, set up some of the basic options, just some of the simple stuff for, uh, configure in the system. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to right click on my node. I'm going to click shell. Now I'm going to do it this way to make it a little bit easier when I run the commands. So I already copied it over. So I'm just going to right click paste and we're going to run the bash script. Okay. So after you paste in the script and you click enter, it's going to bring you over to this. And the first thing it's going to say is, do you want to run the script? Yes. I'm just going to type Y and hit yes. That's going to come over here. going to give you a little wizard. So it's just going to tell you what it's going to pretty much be doing. So we're going to upgrade the sources. So this is going to be changed in the enterprise repo. So I'm going to click yes. So we're going to be disabling the PVE enterprise. So this means that you're going to be using the community edition and you can actually get some updates. So we're going to click yes. I'm going to enable, we're going to enable the no subscription. So Proxmox is free to use, but there also is paid memberships or subscriptions for it. So if you don't plan on currently buying one at the time, you could just do the no subscription. We're going to have now the Ceph packages. So the Ceph package repository provides access to both no subscription and enterprise initially disabled. We're just going to say yes. Uh, we're going to do the PVE test repository. It can give you official access. Um, I don't want to do the PVE test. So we're going to click no. We're going to disable the nag box. It doesn't always work, so we'll give it a shot. And then it's just pretty much saying if you want to support Proxmox. We're going to disable high availability. I'm not going to be making an HA cluster at the moment. So we're going to click yes. And now if you come over here, you can see it's just doing some of the stuff. And we'll click yeah to prox update Proxmox as well. So we fixed the sources. We disabled the enterprise repo. We enabled the no subscription repo. We fixed the Ceph packages. 
we select a node to add in the PV to test repository. So that would be like the test repo for test updates. So it's not guaranteed they're you know set to run yet. They're stable. So I don't really want to do that. Other than that, we disabled the subscription box. Uh, it sometimes works. It doesn't always work. And we disabled HA. So I'm not going to be running a high availability cluster. Right now it's just updating Proxmox. So we're going to give this a few minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, so it upgraded and it did all the updates for me. Now it's saying if I want to reboot, I don't want to at the moment. But if you're doing it this way, I would. I'm going to click no because I don't want to lose my session. So over here, we're all done with this. Now I can close out my shell. I'm going to click leave page and we're going back to summary. Other than that, on the Proxmox helper scripts, there's really nothing at the moment we need to do. We're not using any LXC containers or anything, so we can close this out. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to this root button in the top right. And we're going to change the theme to dark mode because the light is way too bright. That's a lot better. So here's a couple things to start off with to set up your server. Over here is your data center. If you ran multiple Proxmox nodes, there would be multiple nodes over here. So you can see I only have bar mine. That's because there's only one node that we currently have. Over here is the network. And then we have our first two drives that are here. So if you remember, we set up our OS to run on one drive. So I came back to bar mine. And we're in summary. You could see it only gave me 38 gigs because it split it up right away to make a drive. It's all right. We'll make that work. Um, and we, so we have our local. This is one of our disks that are in the machine. And then we have local LVM. This is the other disk that's in the machine. So this is something that we could actually build VMs out of. And over here, you can see it has a couple different options. It has ISO and container templates. So it's a little different. This is where we could upload ISO images and container templates to work with. This is your first time at Proxmox. This might look really overwhelming, but it's okay. I have a couple other videos if you want to watch. They're going to go a little more into detail, but this is really just going to focus on the setup. Other than that, uh, our Proxmox node should be all set up. If I come over here to repositories, we could double check. We can see over here the no subscription is hit. It's already set up. And now we're all set. We're up to date. So if I refresh this, we should be good. It's going to give me an error, but that's okay because it's just something on my machine. Task OK, and you see there's nothing available, so we're all up to date. So now we do have our Proxmox machine up and running. One more thing that I will show so you could do it when you need, because you're probably going to need more than just your LVM, unless you have like a larger disk you built off of. So we're going to come over to your node, and you're going to click Disks. And in here, you can see it's going to show you everything that's in the machine. So you can see I have my 8 terabyte, and it's going to be... It's going to be dev slash sdb. So this is going to be a drive that we can actually come over and we can make into a pool. So it's not going to be like a pool in TrueNAS, but it's going to be making it into like a usable disk for Proxmox to work with. So what I'm going to use is LVM. You could use whichever one you want. ZFS if you have like a lot of memory or whatever it is, LVM thin. I usually just work with LVM. Okay, so my drive has data on it because I was using this on another machine. So it's cool. It has a wipe disk option. Just make sure you're on the right disk. And then we're going to come over here. We're just going to wipe this out real quick. And then we'll be able to use it for our storage. So it only takes about a minute. It's just going to wipe the disk and it's going to set it up. So now I can come back over here and we're going to initialize it with GPT. So now the disk will actually be used so we can make it into a pool. So now that that's set, I can come over to LVM. We can create a volume group and you can see it auto fills to that drive. So it's going to tell us it's that eight terabyte drive. So now that's ready to be used. So I'm just going to call this HDD. Uh, we'll do TAC LVM. There are two different file storage systems in Proxmox. There, or there might be more. I think there's like three or whatever. But the two main ones people talk about are LVM or ZFS. ZFS is good if you're running a machine that has a lot of RAM because minimum it uses like eight gigs by itself. So typically I just use LVM because I like to have spare resources. We're going to click create and it's just going to make out the disk. So now over here you can see in the left we have another option. So whatever you named yours, it would come up over here and you could see that the disk is empty. So it's all good. We can do whatever we want with it. Okay, so over here it looks like it's all good. So now we have a whole hard drive that we can build out to give storage to our VMs as we build them. So pretty much the basics are all set up. We have a Proxmox host set up, and now we just need to start building on some virtual machines. But that's just how we do the quick setup and the install for Proxmox. So that was how we set up Proxmox so it's with the install and then like the post install stuff. So using the Proxmox helper strips is really helpful because it just automates everything. You just answer a few questions and it's all done, ready to go. 
Like I said, this is going to be a few part series I'm going to try to do. We're going to try to do some GPU pass through and making some game servers. So if you're interested in how to make any certain game servers, comment below and I'll try to figure out how to build them and then we can make a video out of it for everybody to use. I'm also going to try to do GPU pass through. I've tried in the past. It's worked. It hasn't worked. It's really iffy and a hassle sometimes on Proxbox. So hopefully we'll get that working and there'll be a video on that. Other than that, I will have all the gear I use in my home live down below in the in the description. It'll be all links. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you're interested in join. We could chat about home live projects or anything else. And I also have an Instagram that I made for the channel. It's called barmine underscore tech on Instagram. So if you just want to search that up, you could go over there and drop a follow. I've just been posting some reels and pictures of stuff that I've been working on that goes along with the channel. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. And I will see you in the next video.